All right, my friends, we are doing 6.2 on page 448. We're in chapter six, and we're going to solve one step multiplication and division equations. Yesterday and the day before, we did one step addition and subtraction equations. They are very similar, and we're going to learn how to do those. Reminder of a vocabulary word, coefficient. We're gonna call that our coworker. So if I have something like 3m, remember that the 3 is the coefficient to the variable, and this situation they are multiplying. So this says I have three sets of m. So if I had an equation like this, 3x's equals 6. This is a multiplication, and the coefficient is 3. If I have 3x's equals 6, our goal, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, is to know what 1x equals. So if I paired them up evenly, every x would get 2. I would have x equals 2. How do I do that without drawing pictures all of the time? Because I know that 3 and x are multiplying, I know that 3 times something is 6. 3 times something is 6. If you remember back when we were in elementary, we had our fact families, I know that 6 is 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Reversing it, I know that 6 divided by 2 is 3, or 6 divided by 3 is 2. So to find this missing friend, I can do the opposite, which is division. So just like before, we would circle our variable and build our wall. These two are multiplying. So if I want to find the variable x, the solution, I would do the opposite and divide. Because if I divide by 3, 3 divided by 3 becomes 1. What I do to one side of my wall, I have to do to the other. I am left with 1x equals 6 divided by 3, which is 2. Or just x equals 2. When I plug that back in, 3 times 2 better equal 6. 3 times 2 equals 6, and it does. That was a lot of explaining for just realizing we have to just do the opposite. So I'm going to do another example and not let it be so scary. 20 equals 4x, or 4 times something. 4 times something. I bet most of you can figure out in your head, 4 times something is 20. And some of you already have that something in your head. I know that if 20 is the something I want to equal, 4 and what? Well, if I don't know that other number, remember you can go backwards and divide it. 20 divided by 4 is 5. 4 times 5 is 20. Showing our work here, we're going to circle our variable and draw our wall. Yesterday, if they were adding or subtracting, we did the opposite. So today, if they're multiplying or dividing, we're going to do the opposite. The opposite of multiplication is division. If I divide by 4 to get rid of it, it becomes 1, which is what I want. I want to know what just 1x is. But if I divide it by 4 on one side, I have to divide by 4 on the other. 20 divided by 4 is 5. A quick check would show me that 4 times 5 is 20. I want to be clear that we're doing the opposite operation of multiplication and division. So when I have this example here, negative 8y equals 24, sometimes our mind wants us to add 8 right here because they see this minus sign. But remember, the 8 and the y are not adding or subtracting. So we would not do adding or subtracting opposite. The 8 and the y are multiplying. So to find out what times negative 8 is 24, I have to do the opposite of multiplying, which is divide. And I want to take that negative with me because a negative 8 divided by negative 8 is a positive 1. If I don't take the negative with me, I would be left with negative 1, and I would have negative 1y. And I don't want to know what negative 1y is. I want to know what positive 1y is. So by taking that negative with me, negative 8 divided by negative 8 is 1. If you divide by negative 8 on one side, you have to divide by negative 8 on the other. 24 divided by negative 8 is negative 3. Checking my families here, I know that 24 its families are 8 and 3, but because this is negative, in order to get a positive here, I would need a double negative to make it a positive.
Now, what happens if we want to do the opposite of division? So if I give you an example here, a over, let's just do positive 4 equals 9. Something divided by 4 is 9. Something divided by 4 is 9. Hmm. Well, if I want to get rid of what's bothering my A, I know that I can do the opposite because we have our fact families here. This, four, this A is being divided by 4. The opposite of dividing by 4 would be to multiply by 4. Check out what happens if I multiply by 4. Well, since I'm multiplying a fraction, I'm going to go ahead and put this over 1. What happens right here when I have 4 times A and over 1 times 4? These are going to cross simplify and they become 1. I'm left with A over 1, which is just A. So by doing the opposite, I've canceled him out. But if I'm going to multiply by 4 on one side, the rule of the scale says I have to multiply by 4 on the other. When I multiply by 4, I get A is 36. Checking my fact families, if I have 36 at the top, 4 times 9. 36 divided by 9 is 4. 36 divided by 4 is 9. Plugging it in, 36 divided by 4 is 9. I have the correct solution. Let's try another one. I have 4 equals m over negative 3. Something divided by negative 3 is 4. Something divided by negative 3 is 4. Some of us can kind of figure it out in our heads, but let's go ahead and circle our variable and build our wall. I need to get m all by himself. He's being divided by a negative 3. I can't add 3 to get rid of it because I have to do the opposite operation. This is a dividing negative 3. The opposite of dividing negative 3 is to multiply negative 3. I'm going to put it over 1 so you can visually see that these would cancel out. If I had multiplied by negative 3 on one side, I have to multiply by negative 3 on the other. Take the negative with you. You don't want to leave the negative with the m. So I would end up with m over 1, which is just m. Then I have 4 times negative 3. I don't have double negatives, so the negative doesn't go away. I end up with negative 12. Let's see. If I said negative 12 divided by negative 3 has to be positive 4, is that true? Ah, 12 divided by 3 is 4. Negative divided by negative is a positive 4. Here are the two kinds of problems we're going to see today. We have multiplication problems where we have to find the variable, and I have division problems where I have to find the variable. In order to solve these, we do the opposite. So in this case, be careful. Don't think you can add 9 here. This is a multiplication problem. That 9 and the D are right next to each other. When I circle my D, I know that to get rid of a timesing negative 9, I do the opposite, so I'm going to divide negative 9. Because negative 9 divided by negative 9 is 1, and I'm left with just D. If I divide by negative 9 on one side, I have to divide by negative 9 on the other. A negative 72 divided by a negative 9 is 8. Negative t two negatives make a positive. Now I have y over negative 3 is negative 8. Circling my variable, I have a dividing negative 3. How do we get rid of a dividing negative 3? We need to do the opposite. Multiply negative 3. That would cancel out and I'd be left with y. But if I multiplied by negative 3 on one side, I have to multiply by negative 3 on the other side. I have a negative 8 times a negative 3. Two negatives make a positive. 8 times 3 is 24. Checking this here, I had said 24 divided by negative 3 is negative 8. 8 times negative 9 is negative 72. You can always check to see if you have the correct answer by plugging it back in and making sure it works.